Yes, we built a guillotine, but we don't have any interest in chopping off heads. Instead, we built this guillotine for science. So stick around, because things are about to get exciting. Three, two, one, go. The main goal of the recovery system that Astra is building for Transcendence, which is the rocket we're building to go to the Carbon Line, is to recover that rocket, or at least part of the rocket, uh, all the way back to the ground. But in order to do this properly, it needs to go through a proper parachute deployment sequence, in which it deploys a drogue parachute at about 10 kilometers, and then finally a main parachute at about 500 meters. And both of these deployments are quite stressful situations in which our system is going to be experiencing up to 3 kilonewtons of force. So the real question is, can the system we designed withstand that shock force? To start out, we needed a way to generate those 3 kilonewtons of force. And after some brainstorming, we settled on a solution where we would actually drop weights in order to create that force. And as our brainstorming kind of continued and moved forward, we kind of realized that actually, we seem to be kind of engineering a guillotine. But don't worry, no heads were harmed in the making of this video. At least not human heads. In order to generate the 3 kilonewtons of force, we did some calculations and realized that we could essentially create this if we just had an apparatus that was about 2 meters long that was dropping weights of about 25 kilograms. The way it works is we have this rectangular frame which has these two rails that run down either side. And then we have a sled which will slide along those rails and contain the weight that we want to drop. And finally, we connect the sled to the recovery system using a similar line to the one we'd be using on the real vehicle. And as soon as the sled reaches the bottom of the rails, that line will spring taut and create the three kilonewtons of force that we expect during the deployment of the parachutes. But this all works great on paper, but does it actually work in practice? And that's what we came out here today to find out. We started things slow with just five kilograms of weight, just to test the system and make sure everything was sliding properly. Three, two, one, go. A great success! To be honest, this worked actually a lot better than expected. The sled moved flawlessly down the rails without getting caught or inhibited by friction caused by the system itself. So this worked really well. So with all of our expectations met, we decided to step things up a bit. Let's crank it up to the full weight to make sure the guillotine is really ready to start doing some testing. With 25 kilograms loaded, we executed the next drop. With the guillotine finally performing as expected, it was time to do a little more work on the recovery system itself. The recovery system basically consists of this recovery frame in which a cylinder, which contains the main parachute, is going to be contained within. And then finally there's a drogue box that's on top of that, where the drogue chute will sit. And everything's going to be covered and put onto the rocket on the bottom of the nose cone. There are three key pieces of the system that we want to test. First we want to make sure that the anchor point for the drogue parachute will be able to withstand the 3 kilonewtons of force. This piece is just a CNC milled part out of aluminum that we designed ourselves, specifically for this purpose. Secondly, we want to be able to test the main parachute anchor line, which sits at the bottom of the cylinder that contains the main parachute. It's basically just this red line right here. And then lastly, of course, we want to make sure that the frame that the whole recovery system is being contained within is also up to the task of those 3 kilonewtons of force. So we have three drop tests to do, let's get to it. With a little bit of apprehension, we mounted our recovery system to the guillotine. Looking at the recovery system just dangling from the top of the guillotine, I couldn't help but feel a little bit apprehensive about the chances of survival. And finally, the moment arrived. Okay, it looks worse than it actually was. The problem here was that the mounting screws that were connecting the recovery system to the guillotine itself were not long enough and didn't actually have enough friction to keep them inside of the wood. Turns out we'd done all our calculations for the recovery system and hadn't thought to just make sure that we had enough screw length to hold ourselves on the guillotine. <laughs> yeah, we bent this part there, okay, I see. Um, yeah, basically just, just bend. Um, because some, mm -hmm. some parts here are actually deformed, I think it's because of the intake, but we, Imp we, we can check that in the footage. Because this is, has it has some minor um, uh, uh, bending uh, that has occurred here, I would now um, go into the, uh, yeah, basically, how's it called? The, 
workshop with that and then just uh, quickly quickly bend everything back into place, the place. <laughs> and I Is, can, I so can pull that off. how are we going to fix this to the thing stronger than the screws because um, okay could could screws. somebody could somebody get me the plate down here so i can um uh, work out a more proper mounting mechanism so after some bending back into shape of the recovery system and of course acquiring some longer screws for mounting to the guillotine, we brought our recovery system back to the test stand, ready for another drop. This time, hopefully, with a little more success. After getting our confidence shaken in that last drop, we decided to scale back the next drop to just half the height uh, and just 15 kilograms. This was just to make sure that the new mounting screws we were using were really up to the task. Test two. Test two. And just like that, we had our first success. The recovery system was able to withstand a little bit of force at least. After some calculation, we found out this was only about 1.5 kilonewtons, so not exactly what we were looking for, but still a success nonetheless. With our faith restored in our engineering abilities, we decided to go all the way. We reconfigured the sled with 25 kilonewtons and planned to drop from the highest height that's available on our machine. This was the moment that we'd all been waiting for. Two months of hard work could all be destroyed in just a fraction of a second in this next drop. Success means we could move forward with this design, confident that we can withstand the parachute deployment forces. But failure means back to the drawing board. And also potentially a really messy cleanup. That's 30. Well, yeah. uh, there we have the structural failure. <laughs> That's pretty bad. We can, we can work this out. So it turns out that our recovery system was not quite up to the task after all. But it wasn't all doom and gloom. The anchor point that we were using for the drogue parachute actually survived the drop just fine. Not a single scratch of damage. Unfortunately, the aluminum profiles that we were using for the frame of the system turned out to be not quite up to the task of handling the three kilonewtons of force. From the quick post-drop analysis, we can see that this beam was actually quite bent and resulted in the failure of the system. Was the, nothing was harmed here? No damage? No. Um, we, are not, we are not done yet, uh, folks, because we have the main uh, structure, which is uh, still uh, intact? to be tested and uh, ah. intact. So All right. we have yet another test. But we weren't done yet. Most of the frame actually survived this last drop. So we could actually still test our anchor line for the main parachute in another drop. We'll just now attach something to here. So we set back up again in order to test this part of the system. A few moments later. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. So it turns out there's a little more to engineering than just the calculations that you do in the classroom. We had definitely gotten the taste of real world engineering in these past two drops. Finally, the last test for the frame itself had arrived. At this point, there wasn't much left of our system, but maybe she could still hold for a final test. And there was our recovery system on trial once again. A shell of its former self, clinging to the last ember of hope, our system could either survive the final tribulation or fail spectacularly. Rest in peace, parachute containment and deployment system. With the results of those trials, it's definitely back to the designing board for the Astra recovery system. We had some positive points, but we definitely need more strength in our recovery frame and also in the anchor line for the main parachute deployment. But this is what we do testing for. We definitely want to make sure that we don't have these types of spectacular failures in the air. Stay tuned for part two of the guillotine tests, which are coming up as soon as we can build another system. And remember to keep expanding your horizons.